Hey guys, take a look at these quartz tubes with black spots. These spots are a thin layer of tungsten that resembles a mirror. I obtained this mirror by decomposition of tungsten hexacarbonyl in an inert gas atmosphere. This tungsten mirror was obtained by reacting vapors of tungsten hexachloride with hydrogen. And this tungsten coating was obtained by reacting tungsten hexafluoride with hydrogen. So in this video I'll show you each of these reactions. Let's go! The first reaction to obtain a tungsten mirror is the simplest. You just need to heat the tungsten hexacarbonyl in an inert gas atmosphere. Normally, tungsten hexacarbonyl appears as a white powder, but prolonged storage can cause it to take on a pink hue. Now I'll start passing an argon flow through the tube while applying heat to the tungsten hexacarbonyl using a gas burner flame. The melting, boiling and decomposition temperatures of tungsten hexacarbonyl are very close, allowing us to witness all three processes concurrently. After heating, when all the tungsten hexacarbonyl has decomposed, we are left with only the tungsten mirror and no additional byproducts. In these close up shots, you can clearly see the places where the tungsten exfoliated during deposition on the glass surface. A white powder has also settled on the cooler section of this tube, which is sublimated tungsten hexacarbonyl. This is how the substance should ideally appear. Tungsten hexacarbonyl is a flammable substance, it ignites easily. Among other combustion products, we can clearly see yellow tungsten trioxide formed. Bromine actively reacts with tungsten hexacarbonyl, replacing all carbonyl groups with bromine, thereby forming tungsten hexabromide. This large ampule contains tungsten hexachloride, existing as a volatile solid under standard conditions. It's an important starting reagent in the preparation of tungsten compounds. To prevent moisture from reacting with it, it's best stored in a sealed ampule, much like other anhydrous transition metal chlorides. This dark purple crystalline substance turns red when cold in liquid nitrogen. This color is only retained at extremely low temperatures. If the ampule is removed from liquid nitrogen, it quickly returns to a dark purple hue. This substance is readily hydrolyzed in moist air, forming the orange tungsten oxytetrachloride and tungsten dichloride dioxide, and subsequently tungsten trioxide. A small amount of tungsten hexachloride can be dissolved in water with acidified hydrochloric acid. The addition of a zinc granule to the solution leads to the evolution of hydrogen, which reduces tungsten in solution from the oxidation state plus 6 to plus 5, forming a tungsten blue. Tungsten hexachloride reacts explosively and ignites upon contact with anhydrous hydrazine.
create a metallic mirror from tungsten hexachloride, you need to vaporize it and heat it with dry hydrogen. For this reaction I've connected two quartz tubes using gypsum and a glass tube, since rubber cannot withstand the high temperatures required. I'll heat the tungsten hexachloride in the left tube connected to the argon supply. The argon will transport the resulting tungsten hexachloride vapor into the right tube connected to the hydrogen supply. The right tube needs to be heated vigorously with gas burner, as this reaction demands temperatures exceeding 500 degrees Celsius. Well, let's do this reaction. Tungsten hexachloride's boiling point is approximately 350 degrees, and you can clearly see its brown vapors being carried by the argon flow into the second tube. All attention is now focused on the section of the quartz tube that I'm heating with a blowtorch. Look at that! Tungsten hexachloride reacts and precipitates only in a well-heated part of the tube. Unlike the reaction wave tungsten hexacarbonyl, this process generates several byproducts that the gas flow carries away. The blue smoke comprises lower tungsten oxychlorides, which readily form upon contact with atmospheric oxygen due to the highly heated chlorides emerging from the tube. Now I am heating only the lower part of the tube, and tungsten is deposited only in this area. After all the tungsten hexachloride was used, we got this tungsten mirror. Unlike a perfectly pure tungsten hexacarbonyl mirror, the tungsten hexachloride mirror may display a bluish tint in certain areas due to impurities of reduced tungsten compounds, which can affect the coating's quality. But what happens if we heat tungsten hexachloride in an oxygen stream? The setup for demonstration is the same as in the experiment with tungsten hexacarbonyl, only instead of an inert atmosphere, there will be an oxygen atmosphere. These dark red needle-shaped crystals are tungsten oxide tetrachloride, which in humid air rapidly transform into yellow tungsten dioxodichloride. And now, what you have been waiting for – tungsten hexafluoride. It's a colorless gas that forms dense fumes in the presence of air. I'll save the detailed properties for a separate video, but here we'll focus solely on obtaining a tungsten mirror from it. Tungsten hexafluoride is mainly used to produce pure tungsten. Here, in a quartz tube, I'll simply heat a mixture of tungsten hexafluoride with hydrogen. As a result of this reaction, a pure tungsten mirror should be obtained. So now I turn on the flow of hydrogen. Bringing an open flame to the tip of the tube, you can see how hydrogen burns. Now I turn on the current of tungsten hexafluoride and strongly heat only a small part of the quartz tube with my butane torch. It's in this heated section above 500 degrees Celsius that pure tungsten begins to precipitate, forming a layer of metallic mirror. Unlike the reaction with tungsten hexachloride, there are minimal side reactions here, so you will not see any blue smoke, as you did with tungsten hexachloride. 
Very high quality tungsten coating deposition from tungsten hexafluoride makes this method the preferred choice among the three compounds in industrial applications. The appearance of these cracks you see here is influenced by various factors, including temperature, hydrogen dryness, the concentration of hydrogen fluoride forming during the reaction, and others. Look at these cracks on ultra macro frames. Nevertheless, even such a tungsten mirror is very firmly settled on a quartz tube. It cannot be scraped off, and it's very difficult to even scratch it. Tungsten hexafluoride has unique properties, and a more detailed video about this compound I'll publish soon, but for now you can support my work on Patreon just like my dedicated viewers. Creating videos with such substances is an expensive film production, and your support helps me create such unique chemical content. Thank you and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.